What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Craftsman mower and the problem is that it's been sitting for a while and now it won't start. Let's take a good look at it, find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this mower, however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours, we'll explore other options later in the video. Now this mower was serviced a few years ago because it wouldn't start. It turned out to be a combination of ethanol gasoline and poor storage that resulted in a carburetor problem. So here it is again with the same no start problem and more than likely the fix will be the same, hopefully without any surprises. Before I go any further I want to check the oil level and its condition. It looks to be at the right level but it's a bit dirty so if we get it running I'll do an oil change. The gas tank was empty when I got it so I'll put some fresh gas in the tank and try starting it. This might give us an idea of exactly what's wrong with it. I was surprised that it even started but it did die immediately so it's probably running on gas from the choke circuit and it looks like we've got a bigger problem as the filter is completely covered in dirt. Now the only way this could happen is if the carburetor is leaking gas and as the mower was running it was trapping dirt in the wet filter. This happened over time not from a single mow. I'm sure the choke is working since it started when I pulled the rope but I want to check to see if it's working properly. And it's a good thing since it looks like the fuel leak has gummed up the pivot shaft and it seems to be sticking a little bit. We'll have to clean it with some carburetor cleaner to get it to work smoothly. Since there's fuel in the tank I want to pinch the fuel line off so we don't have to drain the tank. After that I'll remove the three bolts on the filter base then I'll remove it from the carburetor and then disconnect the fuel line and remove the two bolts holding the carburetor to the engine. Now you don't have to remove the plastic engine cover but I do find it easier to get access to the bolt on the auto choke with it gone. Once the carburetor is free from the engine simply rotate it so you can release it from the governor linkage and then after that we'll remove the bowl nut which is also the main jet. With the carburetor bowl off you can see that there's some semi-solid debris at the bottom. This is probably part of what clogged the main jet. Also my gasket for the bolt is stuck to the bowl, yours could come off with the bolt. Now don't lose this otherwise you will have a fuel leak here. So here's the jet and it's definitely got some stuff on it that's probably causing our problems. Now as the gas dries up you can see it's getting whiter and more obvious that we need to clean it. Unfortunately we have a surprise that's causing our wet filter and diluting our oil as well. In the closed position the float is not level with the edge of the carburetor. The most likely problem is that the needle seat has swelled causing the needle not to sit down on it like it's supposed to. Now this will cause problems like gas leaks or the mower might shut off after a few minutes of running or a no start situation. We definitely have to replace the seat or if you don't want to do that it would be easier to replace the whole carburetor. To clear the jet I'm going to use a small wire to poke all the openings. Now you can also use some carburetor cleaner or some compressed air on the jet as well. I'm going to use some carburetor cleaner on the bowl to get rid of that gunk at the bottom. A wire brush wouldn't hurt either. Remember to clean the top edge where the rubber gasket sits too otherwise we might have an air leak there. After the bowl is clean I want to remove the pin, the float along with the needle to get to the seat. 
I'll take it out in just a minute, but first I want to wire brush the carburetor as well as spray it with some carburetor cleaner, especially around the shaft for the choke. If we take the needle off the float and put it back in the carburetor, we can see that it's sitting too high against the seat. The shoulder of the needle should be flush with the fuel inlet, which it's not. Now, normally I use a small drill bit to get the seat out, but I don't want to damage this one because I want to show it to you. So I'm going to use a small flathead screwdriver to get it loose, and then I'll shake it out. I know it's hard to see, but this is the new seat and the hole in the middle of it is a decent size. It's probably the size of a ballpoint pen tip. For comparison, here's the old seat. It's a bit mangled, but you can barely see the hole in the middle. This is what long-term ethanol exposure does to this rubber seat. It causes it to swell up and close. To reinstall the seat, there's a ribbed side and a smooth side. The ribbed side goes into the hole first. Once you get it started, use the end of a drill bit to push it into place. After that, reassemble the carburetor and then make sure the float is close to parallel with the edge of the carburetor. And luckily for us, the float is very close to parallel, so it should work like it's supposed to and not leak fuel out of the carburetor. We can now complete the reassembly of the carburetor and install it back onto the engine. Another reason why your mower won't start after winter storage is that your brake cable needs adjustment. I had a mower that was working just fine, and a few minutes later, it wouldn't start at all. I then found out that the brake cable anchor started to come out of the handle and it didn't allow the coil to work so I had no spark. I zip tied the anchor back into place and the mower started right up again. Before I go any further, I want to take this opportunity to change the oil. Now normally I would run the engine first to get it warm, but I'm worried that the gas may have done something terrible to it and I don't want to take any chances. Now when the oil was on the dipstick, it didn't look that bad, but once I pour it out, it doesn't look that great at all. Some of you might be asking why I don't use the drain plug to get the oil out. Well, here's your answer. Part of the belt guard bracket is blocking the drain bolt, so it's just easier to tip the mower over. Now make sure you don't overfill the oil, otherwise you're going to be blowing oil and blue smoke out of the muffler when it gets hot. You may also have a hard time starting it as well. I'm going to add just a bit more fuel when I test run the engine this time. Also, I want to see if the gas will leak from the air filter and onto the deck. And after a minute of waiting, there's no gas from the filter, so I think we fixed the leak. But to make sure, I'm going to look at the filter and make sure it's not wet. And luckily for us, it's not wet, so I'm going to go ahead and try starting it, and hopefully it works this time.
Well, it sounds great and the self-propel works, aside from having some bald tires. As long as we keep using treated 100% gas in the mower, it should last quite a long time. So my question is, would you have tried replacing the seat like I did in this video, or would you have just replaced the whole carburetor? Just to let you know, I have had issues come up from replacing just the seat and ended up replacing the carburetor in the end. I know how I feel about it, but I'm more curious about your answer. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. Please feel free to ask any questions, and I hope to see you in my next video.